Hello, this is Jenny Clark with Solvability, and uh, today we're talking to Mitch, and um, Mitch is my imaginary client that I'm working with to help him as a federal contractor get what he needs to be able to grow and scale his business. Um, so what's up with Mitch today? His question to me was, why don't these systems talk to each other? Oh, that's a great question. We need to solve that. Is there a way to solve it? Sure, if you throw enough money at it, it takes enough time. So Mitch is a bottom line kind of guy. He's the CEO of a federal contracting small business. He's got to make sure that he's constantly building out his pipeline, bringing in more work um, to keep growing, to keep that kind of that machine running. And um, the biggest part of federal contracting is um, figuring out how you meet up with the federal bureaucracy. What do you need to do in order to get paid? And how do, you, how do you make it as, as efficient as possible? So Mitch is always telling me, Jenny, I just want it all to work. So he's got five questions he asked. So we'll go through those. The first thing is, how come it takes so long to get the billings done? The second is, why does HR have a different employee list than payroll? His third question is, why does it take six weeks to get our financial statements for last month? How long have we been paying that wrong? He just found out about something that was an error, and it's just, it just irritates him. And why don't these two reports match? Hey, so these are great, great questions. So let's talk about that. So Mitch's first question, how, how come it takes so long to get the billings done? So most companies bill at the end of the month. They have to wait until all their timesheets come in in order to get the data so they can process those billings. Now, um, if you think about it, if your timesheet period ends on a Friday, it'll be Monday afternoon at the earliest before the timesheets come in and have been approved and are ready to start processing. Most companies will do payroll before they start billing. Um, don't have to, but that tends to be the way it happens. We want our billing process to be as fast as possible, as much as like a machine as it is possible to make it. You've got different types of contracts. So a lot of companies will have a checklist of the contracts they're going to bill, and I tend to group them by types of contracts. The fixed price, I know exactly what that's going to be every month. Let's get those done. Let's shoot those out the door. Time and material is where you're billing labor categories by a billing rate. You should be able to calculate those um, invoices and verify that everybody's charging the right uh, labor category and different things like that. But that should happen on the front end because you have to figure out who's what labor category, get it right on their timesheet first. And then maybe the third group of uh, reports that you want to do is your cost plus contracts. Sometimes the cost plus contracts will be the biggest ones and you want to do those first. The other thing that happens with billings that really has slowed them down in recent months or recent years is um, the more complexity in the billing process itself. Some companies will have program managers to review the billing before it goes out. Um, I think there should be a way created that they preview it before the billing is ready. They use the same data. The other thing is a, you don't have to have a program manager to look at a bill to make sure the bill's right. They could look at a report to make sure that that is accurate. Make sure that, okay, these are the people that charge to my contract. They're all valid. How did that person get this charge number? What's wrong? How do I fix it? Billing process needs to be fast, but it also needs to be set up so errors are prevented because you're going to spend three times as much time fixing an error as it would, would have been if it was right in the first place. You also need to set up, set up expectations for your billing process. Know when it's going to start. Um, make sure that you know when it should end and have it clearly defined where the copies are going to go, who's going to do it, how it's all going to work, and documentation will go a long way with that procedure. Mitch's second question, why does HR have a different employee list than payroll? It seems like this is always true and if you look really closely and you start comparing it, you're going to want to make sure that you're not having duplicated, duplicated information. But a lot of times HR is also going to be looking at um, employees that are going to be hired. Um, they may be looking at employees that are on leave but not currently active. So there could be more data that HR has that payroll doesn't. The other thing to take a look at, though, is as your company is growing, is how could you get them on the same database? What would that look like? How would that help you? 
Because otherwise what happens is every time a new employee is onboarded, they're being set up in two systems, the HR system and also the payroll system. So take a good look at that. Um, find out what your options are for an integrated process and how we can do that. Because the longer you let the problem go, the bigger it gets. Midge's third question, how come it takes six weeks to get our financial statements from last month? Well, you probably need to find out what's going on and set an expectation that you need them 15 days after the month end. Some kind of um, deadline would help. You also probably need to find out, um, maybe find out what the steps are that are they're going through and see if there's a different way to do it. Find out um, what is holding it up. The things that always kill me that hold up financial reporting or can be the same things that hold up payroll. It's like, um, well, the CEO has to review the payroll before it gets issued to decide who's going to get paid overtime. Now, that's probably not the non-exempt hourly employees time and a half overtime that you're legally required to pay by law, but it could be that um, the CEO had a policy where they wanted to look at everybody's hours and say, okay, well, you got 20 hours of overtime um, that you've worked. I'll pay you for four of that. You don't want to have intervention in those processes. Identify the bottlenecks because it could be you. Mitch's fourth question, how long have we been paying that wrong? Well, if something's getting paid wrong and you're just now fixing it, that may, maybe means that you didn't have a review process to check it. or And the review process doesn't have to be every single month, but maybe once a quarter you sit down and take a closer look. The other thing is to make sure that the people that are looking at this pay these payments and that are making the payments, there's some kind of review process um, to take a look at it because it's certainly hard to get things like that corrected. It takes a lot of time and energy. And um, you should be able to flip through a list, I mean, flip through your bank statement and um, circle the items that you've got questions on. Just sample it. Find out what those are. Understand what they are. The reason I say bank statement is um, you know, we're so used now to automated downloads and things like that, but I usually recommend that people set it up so their bank statement comes to them, maybe a copy to their house, or they make it a practice that they download the bank statement once a month and look at it, the hard copy, circle it, because that's one of the fastest ways to find out if you've got something going wrong is question what's going through your bank account. The last question, why don't these two reports match? Um, for years, I have um, gone through that explanation of, okay, this one's cut off here, this one is cut off a different time frame. This report, the balance sheet, shows where you are as of a point in time. The income statement shows how you're doing year to date. What maybe happened is somebody went into a prior month and made a correction, which affected our rolling forward balance. Those kind of things, you should have controls in place to prevent that from happening. Because if that does happen, it means you just made a decision on data that's been changed instead of being identified, having the change identified in the month. So you could say, oh yeah, now I remember. So um, having an accounting system that's integrated makes a big difference. Having a staff that's trained, having review processes built in, those are really part of Mitch's responsibility for I want it all to work. Mitch is unstoppable. Are you unstoppable? You know where you want to go. Solvability can help you get there with the cost and pricing intelligence you need to accelerate and scale your business. Most of our clients get started with our free wrap rate calculator. You can download that at our website, which is solvability.com. S is in Sam, O-L-V is in Victor, and the word ability.com. A wrap rate calculator, what does it do? It tells you Here's what, if we assume this much for overhead and this much for GNA and this much for profit, here's how much you should be marking up or burdening a um, direct labor rate to get a, a billing rate. Another way to say that is somebody's asked you what your billing rate is, and you say, well, for that labor category senior engineer, it'll be 100 bucks an hour. You should be able to take the $100 divided by this wrap rate, and that will be the amount you can afford to pay that employee. There's lots of ways to calculate wrap rates. My wrap rate calculator is just to show how the basic math applies, but there's much more to it, figuring out what your overhead and your GNA are. When you need that kind of help, I'd really like to talk to you about working with me to figure out exactly where you are and make sure we're putting in tracking systems that would um, give you the cost and pricing intelligence you need. So 
To do that, why don't you just text me? Text me at 256-882-6276 and tell me your company, your name, and what your urgent issue are, and let's set up a, let's set up a call to talk about it today.